Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and welcome to the Stewards Room, where we'll be taking a look at racing incidents submitted by you guys and trying to make a determination on who, if anyone, was at fault. There's a link in the description to submit your own clips and feel free to check out the playlist link for more of these videos, specifically the first which acts as a scene setter. Also keep an eye out for cards popping up on screen towards the end of each segment where you can vote on who you thought was at fault for each incident. So we've talked about overtaking both up the inside and around the outside and what you can do in overtaking situations on corner exit, but we haven't yet covered what you can and can't do when it comes to defending your position. So that's what we're going to cover in this uh, in this episode and we've got a few clips to really showcase this. The first one is a mixed bag really because to me it seems like both cars are at fault in some way, but... What you can see from the Renault in front of us is that he's moving all over the road and that is a definite no-no. Now, the crash actually happens as they come to this part of the corner. We'll delve into that in a little bit more detail and slow it down and everything like that. But what I want to focus on, first of all, is all of that movement that we saw at the very, the very start of the clip. So on the straight, you can see that the Renault in front, he moves right, he moves left, right, left, multiple times. And that is a definite no-no. So here we are again with the rules of racing document that's always linked in the description of these videos. And you can see quite clearly that all the time you have to leave a space quote is right here. And that's specifically regarding what you can and can't do when it comes to defending your position on a straight. So rule number one on this entire document is the one move rule. So when one driver is completely ahead of another on a straight, they are permitted to make a move in one direction. This move can be of any size within the track limit and the move can be made as slowly or as quickly as the driver likes. They can jink suddenly to one side or they can spend an entire straight gradually shifting across the track. As you can see from the diagram there, making one move is allowed. More than one change of direction on a straight is called weaving and is not permitted. As you can see right there, this sort of thing is absolutely not allowed when you're racing on a straight and trying to defend your position. Um, the, the one move rule holds true whether the defender's moves are designed to block the attacker or to stop the attacker from keeping in the defender's slipstream. When the defender makes their one move, the distance and closing speed of the attacker may also be considered by the stewards. If the attacker is closing quickly and is only a short distance behind, then they may not have time to evade such a sudden move into their path. And it's up to the stewards discretion at that point with what to do. So let's go back to the clip. So we're on the straight and the Renault that we're taking the perspective from is catching up. So the defender, the guy in front, he makes his one move and he goes over to the right. And that's it. That's his one move done. Now he could still have continued going over to the right, but he decided to basically stop there and keep going straight again. That is his one move done. That's all he's allowed to do. Obviously the reason for that is if you're weaving all across the road, it's very dangerous. Um, and you could basically just stop anybody from coming past you by being a madman and that's not what racing is about. So he's made his one move but as we kind of scroll it on again you see that when the attacker goes to the right he goes to the right a little bit more then he goes to the left again then he goes a little bit to the right again as you can see right there and then the attacker ends up going all the way to the right to try and uh, sort of juke him out. So at that point the defender has made about four moves he went right then left then right maybe three moves I don't know whatever it was it's more than one so he is totally in the wrong for what he did there now this is where it gets a little bit interesting in this case in particular because it almost looks like it's both of them that are causing an incident here so as we're obviously the the attacker who were with the perspective that we are at right now, he's trying to go up the inside, and to be honest, he's got this. You know, he he can quite easily break up the inside at this point, and he'll have the move done. But for some inexplicable reason, he starts to turn to the left. But almost at exactly the same time, the defender starts to turn to the right. So let's just play it and keep an eye out for that. So as you can see, we're coming along here, and then we see a jink to the left about there it is that jink to the left it was very small but there was definitely a jink to the left right there and you could kind of see it on the 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 um the, the steering wheel he moved to the left but when you when you actually look at it from both like from this perspective it also looks like the defender 
moves to the right at the same time. So they basically just take each other out. They both come together. It's like the defender is trying to block him off and the attacker is trying to, I don't know what he's trying to do. But either way, they're, they're, they're equally to blame for what happens at this apex. It's no surprise, given the ridiculous defensive moves that the, the defender was trying to do on the straight, that this happened because he was all over the road. And then to, for, I don't know you know, what the attacker was thinking to, to jink to the left like that, but for me, the, just everything about this clip was wrong. <laughs> everything that both these drivers do is wrong. I would put this down to a racing incident and have done with it and wash my hands of the whole situation. But there will be a poll in the top right uh, for you to decide who you think is mainly at fault or is it both of them just as bad and it's a racing incident. But yeah, the poll in the top right, you can vote on it. Um, and, you know, I wanted to start off with this one to get the basics down that you are only allowed to make one move on the straight because that's going to then feed into the rest of the clips. So clip two, we're at Monza. We've got the white car in front of us. Jinx back over to the right here on the at the end of the straight and we hit into him as the, you know, the, the blue car. There's nothing you can do at that point. He just moves over and breaks in front of us. So you could say that this is a case of moving multiple times, you know, on the straight. But there is something specific about this incident that we're going to have a look at. So let's take a look at the uh, the document again. So point two of the document is taking the one move rule to its limits. Now, the one move rule seems totally unambiguous with no possible gray area to exploit. However, drivers have often bent the rule by arguing that their second move is part of their racing line for the corner that follows the straight. So the way that this can happen is that the defending driver makes their move to the inside of the track and then they pull back to the outside of the track to retake their racing line for the corner. Obviously the racing line is outside to inside to outside as you can see on the diagram there. So they've you know they've made their one move here to uh to, to defend the position and then because they want to get a better line and back on the racing line they go back and make a second move before they you know, start their racing line for the corner. And that's what you could say the, the car in the previous clip was doing. He, he moved back over to the right to then take his racing line for the next corner. Now, as it says here, this move is seen very frequently and is considered acceptable with one important caveat. When the defender moves back to the outside, they must leave at least one car width between themselves and the edge of the track allowing the attacker to potentially run deep around the outside. So when you uh, go out like this, as you can see, you defend your position and then you come back to the left to take your racing line for the corner. You need to leave the width of a car to your left because if you've got a, a defend, uh, an attacking driver on your left here, for example, then you need to give him space to be able to run deep around the outside. If you just close that off and start braking, it leads to crashes, it leads to accidents. So that's obviously, you know, part of the rules that if you are going back to retake your racing line, you'd have to leave one car width between the edge of the track and yourself. So as we can see, or as we saw from the clip, this isn't what happens here. The white car moves back over to the right to take his racing line, which is ordinarily fine. And if he'd stopped about here, he would have been fine. So he's, you know, left this amount of gap between himself and the outside of the track to allow the blue car to run deep if he needs to. It's not going to be quicker to go around the outside, but it allows the, for that to happen. And, you know, he, he's got the inside for the corner as well. So the chances that he's going to get overtaken in this situation are actually pretty minimal. And he's just defending the inside. But what he does, the wide car, is that he keeps moving to the right and moves further and further to the right, slams on the brakes pretty much straight away. It's a very, very uh, quick move over to the, the right and then immediately gets on the brakes. So there's very, very little time for the, the blue car to react. And as you can see, there's not enough of a gap here. There's, the, he hasn't left enough of a gap on the right-hand side to allow the blue car to get through. And because of that, we get a crash. That's exactly what happens. As you can see, there's you know only he's only left half a track width, 
and you can't do that. You can't just change your change your line on a straight as quickly as that and expect nothing to happen from it. You have to, you know, if you're making a change of direction, leave that space on the outside, as the rule said, or you just stick with your line and defend the inside. He didn't do that, so I would personally be putting this completely 100% to the fault of the white car. But again, you can vote in the poll in the top right. Is it the white car's fault, the blue car's fault? I've presented the rules as they are, but maybe you still disagree. Let me know in the poll in the top right. A little card will pop up and you'll be able to vote on whose fault you think it is. So our third clip looks like it's the very last few corners of the very last lap of a 50 minute race and they're battling over the lead. So we're at the perspective of second place. We see some very staunch defending from the leader. And there's there's not there's a few things to unpack in this one because it's not the cleanest thing that I've ever seen. But the main incident comes just after this corner. We see that the car who we're uh, riding on board with basically just clips the back end of the leader. He ends up waiting. But I think the reason that this was submitted was to, you know, kind of figure out whether he should have waited in the first place um, and given the win back to uh, the red car. So the thing that I want to just focus on before we get into that is part three of this document that says racing alongside another car. When one driver is completely ahead of another driver on a straight, either of them can move with impunity within the width of the track, but things change if there's any overlap between the cars because any lateral movement could cause a collision. So if two cars have any parts of their car alongside one another, each driver must respect the space occupied by the other car. It doesn't matter who's ahead or how far away ahead they are, they cannot initiate a move into another car. As you can see from the, the diagram here, even if the other car is, you know, front the, the front wheel to rear wheel, as you can see here, you, you aren't allowed to, you know, move over to the left to force that driver, you know, off the track or cause a collision. Now, this only applies to racing on a straight. It doesn't apply to what we covered in last week's episode when it comes to, you know, the exit of a corner. But it is important to, as something to, to know, going into this clip. So with that in mind, as we're coming up to uh, this corner, first of all, obviously both drivers are driving parallel to each other and that's fine, but then they have a little coming together there. And then I don't know, I don't know what the, the, the neon is doing. He kind of looks like he turns left into the Turismo there. So that's very naughty. I, I don't like to see that at all. Um, and whether that is a, uh, you know, penalty worthy or not it is, for whoever's you know organizing this race to decide but that was definitely a little bit naughty to to turn into him like that because he had the outside line and he was you know deserving of the space he wasn't deserving of being hit so the the difference in the next bit is it's it's a very very close thing as to whether the the driver is you know, ahead at that point. Now, this is the normal racing line. The normal racing line is, as we've covered, outside, inside, then outside again. So the normal racing line does naturally go over this side. And then as you'll see that the next corner is the left corner. So they would then come back to the right to go left. So I think what the Turismo, the, the car that we're looking at now, is anticipating is that the, the red car he's anticipating that he's he's not going to continue going this way but then but instead go over to the right to take the line for the next corner but he doesn't do that he keeps moving over to the left which he is entitled to do because as you can see from even just this you know image right there the the the, the red car is fully ahead the neon is fully ahead of the turismo at this point so he is allowed to make his move and continue his line over to the left now the, the, there could be an argument that said this is a you know the exit of a corner so really the neon is completely entitled to do what he wants but the, the gray area here comes from the fact that it's barely a corner you know it's a full throttle uh not really much of a corner sort of thing so 
it's a bit of a gray area between what the rules for a corner are and the rules for a straight. But either way, the neon is well within his rights to take the line that he is and be where he is. And obviously, it's just the, the misjudgment of the Turismo behind that he thinks he's going to have the space to be able to go through and up the inside for the next corner. He doesn't. And then he doesn't realize that and doesn't back out of it. So they make contact and obviously, you know, the rest happens. So in my eyes, for this particular case, and this is what we're looking at, obviously the first bit was a little bit naughty, but whether you could give a penalty for it, I don't know. Um, it, it wasn't. It certainly wasn't very good driving, let's put it that way. But for this case in particular, which is the one that we're looking at for this video, I would, yeah, put that on the Turismo and he he did right to wait and give the position back in that respect. You guys may say it differently. Like I say all the time, the card will pop up in the top right-hand corner of the screen and you can vote on who you think was mainly at fault for this one as well. Our fourth clip is kind of very similar to what we've just seen because it's also in that kind of gray area of it, it's a corner, but it's not really a corner. It, it's a full speed thing. So as you can see, there, there was an incident initially and then the yellow car is trying to you know retake his racing line but there's a faster car coming behind and they, they end up colliding so the the one thing that's different about this one is that the yellow cheetah is basically he, he's off the track as you, you saw at the very start that he had a coming together with this red car the red car does actually wait so that's all fine but he's off the track. Now, the guiding principle, if you're off the track and you've had an incident, is that you can only retake your racing line once you're back up to racing speed. And the yellow car wasn't up to racing speed. And, and you can kind of see that, you know, he's he's closing, closing, closing a little bit more and a little bit more. The green car, you know, there is an argument that the green car should have noticed what was going on and uh, and gone around the outside instead, but that's not on the green car to, to to decide. And when we slow it down as well, you also see that the yellow car sort of moves a little bit to the right, then a little bit more to the right, then a little bit more, then there's a big movement there. But then even now, there's still an overlap, and we were talking about the difference in speed being a factor um, earlier on when we were looking at the document, there's still a big difference in speed. There's still a space to go through there, but the space just disappears. And that is entirely on the yellow car. And to be honest, it's it gets so much, you know, there's so little space that the yellow car is actually on the dirt. So as you can see here, again, we talked about it earlier. When a defender makes their move, the distance and closing speed of the attacker may also be considered. Um, if the attacker is closing quickly and is only a short distance behind, then they may not have time to evade such a sudden move into their path. And that's exactly what we saw there because uh, the, the closing speed was so big, it, because the yellow car was the one who was slower, that sudden move at the very end to close off the line wasn't acceptable because of you know it was the yellow car that was slower. He knew he was slower. He shouldn't have made that move right in front of the green car and closed off that space because you just can't react to that as the green car. And it's not on the green car's responsibility to worry about what the yellow car is going to do when he's rejoining the track from an incident and going slower. Any driver would just follow their racing line. The green car is on the racing, racing line. We've talked about this before. The racing line is king. He's the one who's on it. And the yellow car is trying to get back on it, but not quickly enough. And he makes changes of direction at the very last minute. Even now, that it still looks like there's enough of a space, but he just keeps coming and coming and coming. The, the difference in speed of the cars is a big factor as well. From my eyes, the yellow car has basically no right to be trying to get back onto the racing line at that point. He should have just continued along the outside of the track until he was up to full racing speed. There's no need for him to come back and really he's not allowed to do that. He, he's not up to full racing speed. He has no rights to the racing line after the incident. Only, only when you're at full racing speed can you do that because this is a full throttle corner. So that's my take on it. 
you might see it differently. Do you think the green cars are fault, the yellow cars are fault, bit of both, racing incident, one of those things? Let me know on the poll in the top right and obviously in the comments down below as well, which are always very hectic when it comes to the steward room videos. You guys are always happy to let me know what you think. But uh, yeah, this one I would have to, I would have to give it to the yellow car as being at fault for that one. And our final clip here, we're coming up to a corner. There's kind of some argy badger going up in, up in front and then the white car in front just inexplicably jinks over to the left. And, you know, if I was the car that we're, the, you know, th that we're of this perspective of right now, I wouldn't even be worrying about that, to be honest. But let's have a look at the document and see what it says. So part four of the document, on a straight, a defending driver has the right to suddenly train, change direction, even using the entire track width if they are fully ahead of the attacking driver. We've just been over all of that. The same right does not apply in or immediately before the braking zone for a corner. Sudden changes of direction just before or within the braking zone are considered extremely dangerous as they can leave the attacking driver nowhere to go. Now the reason that this is a thing is because when you're braking, you're using the majority of the traction of the car to brake. So if someone immediately moves in front of you when you're braking, you can't then evade that because you're using everything that you can in the car to brake. You can't also turn. But as you can see, this left hand movement by this white car is just ridiculous. You know, a, a clear move in the braking zone moves over to the left. It's no surprise. I mean, to be fair to the car who were at the perspective of what we're looking at, he tries to avoid it. He tries to turn in more to try and avoid what the white car is doing. But obviously he can't at that point, again, for the same reason I've just said, he's already using the grip that he has to, to slow the car down. And, you know, what can you do? This is nobody's fault but the white cars because of that movement. He's, he's all the way over to the right-hand side of the road. And then he just inexplicably in the braking zone moves to the left. And that is absolutely, as we've just seen from the rules, not allowed. You're not allowed to move in the braking zone. I mean, a, a tiny amount if it's if it's part of the braking for the corner, but certainly nothing like this. So it's, it's no surprise that he ended up getting involved in a crash because, because the line that he takes there is just completely unnatural. So that's my take on it again. Paul, in the top right, you can vote on who you think was at fault. Oh, and obviously, of course, the car who we're seeing here gets a 10-second penalty because GT Sports' penalty system is totally broken. But that's a topic for another time. <laughs> so that's pretty much it for this episode. Let me know your thoughts down below and in the polls on the video itself. You can find in the video description all the info and links that you may need to submit your own clips. And if you'd like to support me, you can do so on Patreon by becoming a YouTube member or simply subscribing and liking the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you next time.